So in this video, I want to give you guys 10 things you may want to consider before moving abroad. As my audience grows, I realize more and more people are seeing my channel and being influenced by the videos that I put out and other YouTubers, and you're considering moving to a different country. And so I want to provide you guys a list of things that you may want to consider before you think about embracing a life outside of your home country. By the way, guys, I want to say thank you for 12,000 subscribers. We keep going up, so appreciate everyone who supports the channel, whether it's just liking the video, sharing them, watching them all the way through. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate that. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into number one. Okay, so number one thing on the list that I'm going to talk about is going to be your income. Because obviously, anytime we talk about moving or going anywhere, relocating, money is going to be one of the biggest factors. So when considering moving abroad to another country, some of the biggest things you have to consider is one, do you have the ability to continue to make money? Are you retired, retired with a savings? Are you looking at getting a remote job? Do you already have one? Those are some major things you want to consider. And so I'm constantly being asked, you know, like how much money should you have saved? How much money should you make? Things like that. So my advice on the income part is going to be that unless you are someone who's retired, you have, you know, uh, a monthly income coming in from like retirement, social security, whatever, or you're someone who has uh, a remote business or job, I would not move overseas because so many people maybe just get inspired and watch a video and say, you know what, I'm going to take the jump and I'll figure it out when I get there. And while that can definitely be a reality if you have the right mindset for it, <laughs> um, you that could end up very ugly. So many people move abroad and, you know, come overseas with just a savings, end up going broke, you know, having a miserable life, and the whole dream ends up falling apart. So 100% you either want to have income coming in or you want to uh, be retired with still income coming in. So bottom line is you need to have money flowing to you before you choose to move abroad. Do not move overseas with no plan because, for example, in America, if things go south for me, right, I, I could live at home. I could, you know, potentially qualify for certain government help and programs. I don't have those same things overseas, right? I can't go overseas, my, I don't have any income, and then expect another country's government to help me. It's just not happening. It's literally not going to happen, guys. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be trying to, you know, beg money from whoever. You don't want that to be your situation, right? The point of going overseas, in, I feel like, one, is to be able to enjoy yourself. Why go to another country to be miserable? So income is going to be the number one thing you must consider before moving abroad. With that being said, that'll lead us into number two, which is cost of living, right? When we talk about living overseas, one, this you, we have to start with what country do you live in right now, right? Where are you based out of? Most of my audience I know is American, some people from the UK, um, obviously people all over, but the majority of my audience is Americans, and I would probably say people in UK. But with that being said, I most of my videos I'm talking about from a perspective of an American going to... A different country whether it's southeast somewhere in southeast asia like thailand indonesia uh, vietnam right these are affordable countries to live in as an american and when you do the comparison but living abroad can mean you want to live anywhere maybe you want to consider moving to somewhere like dubai or maybe you want to move to brazil or whatnot with that being said you want to consider the cost of living of where you're going in relation to your income that you're bringing in right so for example income and, and money is all like it's, it's subjective it's really subjective because to make two thousand dollars in the states is at the poverty line right if you're making that a month you're you're literally at it's like poverty line but if you take two thousand dollars and bring it over here to thailand or indonesia or vietnam your two thousand dollars now spends like the equivalent of someone who was making like sixty thousand dollars i'm just throwing a number out there but it's literally that your money multiplies because you have more spending power right if you're making two thousand dollars a month in the states and your rent is eight hundred dollars or a thousand dollars literally half your income just went to just your uh your living right just to have a place to stay now mind you if i take that two thousand dollars a month and i come over to thailand and i'm you know i'm being fiscally responsible and say i get an apartment that costs three hundred dollars I still have $1,700 a month left to spend on food, transportation, and all these different things. 
as you guys may have known in seen in my other videos I told you guys I cut a lot of my expenses by simply being overseas right I don't own a car anymore so that means I don't have to pay maintenance on on a car insurance gas uh, a car payment just all the things that come with owning a car right and then also when you go out you got to find parking and could be a complete hassle now I essentially do with the equivalent of uber which is grab and bolt and other and gojek when you're in southeast asia and now my average ride is costing me you know anywhere from like 50 cents on up to like three dollars and if it's a long ride like an hour i'm paying like 20 right but if we go to uber in the states that same one hour ride would be i wouldn't be paying 20 i'd be paying like a hundred dollars i you know i go from I, when i go to new york i go from say jfk to the bronx my ride is going to be like $85 to $100 from the airport to that to where I need to go same thing if I'm local you know in my hometown in North Carolina right I'm going from my house across town say 15 20 minutes my uber ride is probably gonna be at least 15 20 dollars or more so cost of living is a big thing but if you are someone who has a high income now you're not you don't have to really base where you're living at off of the cost of living but if you're someone who's more on a budget and I would say uh, for someone who can consider going anywhere is I would say if you can, if you're bringing in, I would say the, the, the monthly range of $6,000 or more a month, you can comfortably live in a lot of different places. You, like basically your location freedom has gone way up versus someone who makes two. If you're making two a month or three, you can only consider places like, you know, Colombia or Southeast Asia where the cost of living is a lot more reasonable right but if you want to move somewhere like if you just want to be open to be moving anywhere you want an income that is essentially at least two to three times more of what you think would be necessary to to live that's just my opinion if you're moving somewhere abroad right you want to be better better you want to be better safe than sorry so cost of living is big obviously it's way more affordable as an American to live over here than it is in America on the same amount of income right Next thing we'll talk about is community when considering moving somewhere else you want to consider the ability to find community whether that is an expat community or a community amongst the locals of where you're going and so this will be a little bit complex and we'll also hit on some of my other points I have in this video which we'll talk about you know language barrier and open-mindedness in a second but thinking about community right as a young uh, black african-american when I'm going somewhere, I have to consider, okay, one, will I be accepted by, you know, the society of where I'm going, the culture here? You know, will people embrace that or will it be opposed to me? Um, can I find a community of other people who are similar to me? And that doesn't just mean black people. That could mean Americans. That could mean uh, young people. That could mean people who have similar interests of mine, whether you're someone who likes to play you're 65 or I don't want to make it seem like only, only old people play pickleball but let's say you're 65 years old you love playing pickleball and and chess right and you think about moving abroad well you might want to think to yourself where am I move where I'm moving to can I find a community of people that play pickleball and chess if you have that here right now at home and where you're living and you won't have that if you want to move overseas that might be a deal breaker for you so with that being said, community is important. One way to do that is by joining Facebook groups. Um, there's many expat Facebook groups. Anywhere you think about moving, just Google, um, not Google, go on Facebook and type in expats living in XYZ. I'm in multiple expats groups, some in Mexico, some in Thailand, Vietnam. I just joined them before I moved over here because I didn't know exactly where I was going to go. So I wanted to be a part of multiple communities. I just want to have be around people who had insight of where I was going and also people I could grab a coffee with or you know or go out and drinks with or whatever so I think that's important I mentioned before that solo traveling and you know moving abroad whether it's for a year two years or you just don't know when you'll go back it can be lonely so I think finding community is very essential so that will lead me into my next point which will be language barrier because if you understand the language of where you're going it's going to be a lot easier to find community because you won't be limited to the communities of just people who speak your language right so because i don't speak indonesian or i don't speak like fluent thai i only know how to you know courtesy words and greetings i can't 
find community in a group of people who don't speak English because I and, and you know like I don't speak their native language so that language barrier is going to be something that either is overcame by learning the language which obviously that's take that takes time so understand by when I say language barrier I don't mean not ever trying to learn the country's language or where you're going I mean initially right because it's gonna be that hump to get over that if you don't speak the language it's gonna be a little bit you know bumpy if you go somewhere that doesn't speak your native language luckily I would say in Indonesia that's an upside in Indonesia I'm actually that's where I'm at right now yes I'm back in Bali um, it's so close to Thailand it's an easy you know it's an easy trip but um here in Indonesia a lot of people speak English way more than they do in Thailand so it's easier to communicate with even locals here in Indonesia versus being in Thailand in Thailand the people who speak English are usually people related to uh, the people trying to make money off of you I just mean like the tour tourist uh, industry so whether it's uh, companies you're booking trips with or like nightlife so for example in Thailand the most common people who speak English and speak it you know decent it's going to be the women in nightlife because a lot of their money is made off of tourists and foreigners, right? I'm not saying that other people don't speak English. Obviously, you have the professionals who work with, like real estate professionals who work with a lot of foreign clients. They speak English very well. Other than that, it's going to be a little bit rocky finding people who speak like fluent English. You're going to need to use like the Translate app a lot uh, to communicate beyond, you know, basic greetings and whatnot. So, another thing to consider um, is obviously language barriers. Like for me, if I moved to somewhere that was a Spanish-speaking country, I probably could be fluent in Spanish in about three to four months, I think, if I challenge myself. Uh, because I've been familiar with Spanish my whole life. I grew up learning a little bit of Spanish. So definitely be able to pick it up faster than being able to speak Thai. The next thing to consider is age. Uh, that's a big one, right? And I know that I have an audience of people, wide variety of, a of ages, right? Whether it's you know people a little bit older, middle age, or, you know, or my age, or maybe even a little bit younger than me. Age is a big one to consider because age and culture kind of play hand in hand, right? Depending on where you're going and uh, what you're looking for in life is going to be different things, right? So if you're young, uh, you're say for example, you're a young male, you want to move overseas. Some of the things you might still uh, be looking for is a you know a, a nice dating life, a nightlife, a vibrant you know community of young professionals. Those are things you might want to consider. So wherever you think about moving you want to do some research in advance and know are those things there can I find you know a nice dating life in where I'm looking to move to versus if you're a little bit older and say you already settled down you're not really looking for love you just want things more or less like peace safety good cost of living you know maybe a quiet beach uh, good health care then okay those might be your top uh, things you're looking for your non-negotiables so that's going to be some other things you think about before you consider moving abroad is, okay, how think about your age and think about, does my age fit in with this community or culture that I'm getting ready to, or that I'm thinking about moving to? The next big one is going to be the visa situation. People mention that all the time in my videos. You didn't go into enough detail about visas and you forget to mention that, you know, visas. Okay. Yes, guys. I thought people understood that, that whenever you're talking about moving somewhere, you have to consider the visa situation. So I'll only speak on what I'm familiar with, which will be Thailand so far. With Thailand, your long-term options are going to be like the, the elite visa, which is gonna cost, I think like $20,000 or more. You guys go actually do your own research on the cost, but you either have that visa, there's a, I think one other one, retirement, non-O visa, or something like that, but um, I'm not too hip on those because obviously it's not really that relevant to me. Um, the other ones for like, short-term long stay I'll say short-term long stay I mean like a year or less is gonna be like your uh, education visa which that will run you about I think anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars depending on whether you do it on your own or use an agency and that will get you a year of being able to stay there and then obviously you can like renew from there or reapply um, and then you have your non visa options which is basically just staying on the initial uh, stamp they give you whether it's 30 days or however long and then you know doing border runs and whatnot as necessary with that being said um, everywhere has their own rules and you want to you know make sure you read up on that Thailand is going to be 30 days plus you can qualify for a 30-day extension so pretty much 60 days per entry into the country then you will have to leave now 
the only downside about that is after a while you can be oh they they could deny you they can tell you okay we're not letting you in anymore because you've you know entered and you know exit too many times without the proper visa like they want you to pay the the visa fees and you know have the right documentation and whatnot so that's definitely something to consider now for example somewhere that doesn't require any real paperwork or like uh, or a strict visa for at least Americans and other countries is Malaysia Malaysia without having any you know visa uh, in advance just your stamp on arrival gives you 90 days so you can literally live in Malaysia for three months per passport stamp that's pretty good 90 days without having to have a visa is pretty good so if you're some if somewhere like you know Thailand or just Southeast Asia you might have a living plan that might uh, be made of you living in Malaysia for three months in in Bali for three months and Thailand for three months out of a year where you move around which hits on my next point of mobility if you are not getting you know the proper visas to where you're going then you're going to have to without choice in uh, embrace an option of mobility you're going to have to take flights you're gonna to have to do border runs and either you're gonna embrace that or that's going to annoy you if it annoys you then like I said get the proper visa options if not then you're gonna to have to move around you cuz at a certain point you're gonna to have to leave the country is just what happens right you have no choice but to leave the country sometimes like I said you can just do a, a regular border run where you just go fly away for a day come right back and they'll let you in but once again I will warn there will come a point where they stop you and be like they're gonna question you and either they're gonna let you in and tell you that hey don't do this again without the right visa or we're gonna deny you or you're just gonna get denied outright from the uh, you know from the beginning and you're gonna get deported back to where you came from or back to your home country so I don't want you guys to be caught off guard or you know be thrown off by the possibility of that happening so next I mentioned age but I also want to talk about gender because I understand that traveling are is two different worlds or can be two different worlds depending on whether you're male or female right um, I understand that my experiences as a, as a male traveling the world are just existing is gonna be different from a woman right we have different worries and things we have to think about right I, I don't ever really go out worrying about you know the possibility of being say sexually assaulted could it happen anything could happen but is that usually a worry as a male no now depending on where you go in the world you could still have a worry as a male of being mugged you know drugged these things happen you know and, and robbed so safety is something you want to consider anywhere but back to just gender gender is gonna play a role in many things right uh, there's countries where women don't have as many rights women aren't as free than certain places so that's something you want to consider um, you want to consider does the society or culture respect women where you're going right are you looked at as equal um, and then also the safety part is are women typically safe or is anybody typically safe where you want to go right but like I said um, for example if we go back to dating I've spoken directly to for example black women and they've told me that you know dating life is usually one of the hardest things to find uh, abroad being in Southeast Asia let me be specific right if they went somewhere else where maybe there was more uh, black men then it probably would be maybe a little bit easier right but I'm kind of speaking on Southeast Asia for that example but like I said that's something you want to consider is gender and where you want to go does your gender a good fit for the culture or society you want to enter next thing we'll talk about is open-mindedness right uh, wherever you go you want to really ask yourself are you open-minded because moving abroad means that you're gonna have to give up your way of thinking your way of life as you know it and be willing to embrace something brand new new people new culture new food um, you know maybe for some people it's new religion whatever if you're not an open-minded person to the point where you think you're just gonna go to someone else's country and bring all of your ways and habits and all those things you might want to rethink right like for example like if you are someone who uh, say for example is rude or say you say say food let's talk about food 
you only like eating hamburgers and and chicken strips, whatever, pizza. But then you you want to go move to I don't know what's a what's the example somewhere that might not have that. Let's just say Thailand. I mean Thailand has the food, but if you're someone who only wants American food or something like that, and you want to move to Thailand and you're not willing to embrace the food of their culture, I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit hard. Like I mean you can cook for yourself, and if you're willing to do that, then I guess. But I personally think that if you're gonna be if you're gonna embrace moving abroad, you should be open to you know enjoying the food, the culture, whatever. Like don't come somewhere and just stay the same i think that's kind of pointless it's like just stay at home right if you're going to be the same way i feel like the whole point of traveling abroad is not just you know to save money um and, and bring your way of thinking i think it's to get game perspective on the world and so traveling is a powerful thing and so you should be open to that perspective change and you know in a new way of life potentially you don't have to change everything about yourself but i think traveling and living somewhere else should definitely change you in some ways for the better and last but not least is going to be your why and I think this is what trumps everything right it's gonna be your why because your why is going to is gonna be what carries you through the lonely times or dark times you have while overseas or just in life in general right is having a why because the moment you move abroad or, or change your location and you have this whole fantasy and fairy tale in your head and things go south or something bad happens or someone treats you a way that you didn't like you felt disrespected or uh, uh, inconvenience happened and now if you don't have a strong why your whole reality is going to turn like sour you're gonna be like why did I do this I knew this was a mistake I should have never came here and you know that whole fairy tale is gonna come crashing down and I think having a strong why to you know to as something to lean back on is going to be very uh, necessary to have when moving uh, abroad and living abroad right because it's not always going to be good times when you're overseas <laughs> I love the people waving in my uh, videos but it's not, it's not always going to be good times right and even when you guys see me on YouTube I'm always smiling I don't come on here with drama or negative things but there there is down times and you know things aren't always roses and you know and sunny days out here but with that being said, I always remember my why. Why did I come over here? So when, even when I'm not feeling, you know, in the greatest mood or, or life isn't going exactly as planned, I remember, you know what? That, yo, like my why is that life is short and you have to embrace the good, the bad, and the ugly because that's what makes your, your story, right? So you have to take all those things together. That, that is life, right? You can't have life without the good and the bad because if we didn't have both, then what, how would we be able to measure good? How would we be able to measure bad if we didn't have everything in one right so make sure you understand that if your why is to embrace new cultures to try new food to build new community make sure when you move that you actually do that because I can tell you guys it is easy to move abroad and then get in your own habits and say to yourself at times and not do any of the things you talked about so if anything if you guys get anything out of this video is I want you guys to write down your why start with your why matter of fact now you might notice that I put the why is last, but I feel like for the people who are seriously considering moving abroad, that you guys watch this video all the way through, and so I want to give you the most uh, powerful point at the end, which is going to be with the why. So start with your why, and then once you have your why, you can work off everything else we talked about, age, gender, visa situations, all those things, community, once your why is set. And then from there, once you know your why, then I believe that's going to allow you to also zero in on the locations you might want to consider as uh, uh, an aspiring expat, right? If you want to move abroad. And one last bonus thing, guys, for in the video is that I want to touch on the mobility part. Is that life is about seasons and phases, right? Nothing lasts forever. Life is not the same as it was 15 years ago. Life is not even the same as it was two years ago. We all know how fast the world changes, right? There was covid shut the world down life can change in the blink of an eye right and so if you understand that principle i believe you i believe you can live your life with more peace and reason understanding and just enjoying the fact that change is going to come and nothing will be the same forever for forever and you can embrace that and so the reason why i mentioned mobility again is because i want you guys to know that you know like I, my journey started off in Thailand, but it won't end in Thailand. I plan to move all move all over, and even 
my life right now of you know of being solo and not having kids that will eventually come to an end right my 20s will come to an end my 30s will come to an end life itself will come to an end embrace that right embrace the phases embrace the changes be willing to be mobile be willing to move around and just embrace everything that comes with life anyway guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe see you in the next video if you have any questions leave them below until next time peace out